In this session, we will explain the difference between free cash flows to the firm versus free cash flows to equity. Free cash flows to the firm are the cash flows available to all funding providers. This includes debt holders and shareholders. When we say shareholders, we include both preferred stockholders or preference shareholders and common stockholders. Free cash flows to the firm is also known as unlevered free cash flows. And free cash flows to equity is known as levered free cash flows. So what is the difference between unlevered and levered free cash flows? The word lever is derived from the word leverage, that is interest and debt. So levered cash flow is a cash flow where you have deducted the interest and debt repayments. On the other hand, unlevered cash flow is before deducting interest and debt repayments. Hence, unlevered free cash flow or free cash flow to the firm is available to both debt holders and shareholders. Whereas levered cash flow or free cash flow to equity is cash which is available only to shareholders. How do we derive free cash flows to the firm? The starting point to calculate free cash flow to the firm is EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. I want to highlight EBIT is before deducting interest. So EBIT is earnings attributable to both debt and equity holders. The debt holders will get their interest. But EBIT is an accounting earnings and we want to go from accounting earnings and we, want, we need to get to cash flows. Accounting earnings are very different from cash flows due to things that the accountants do like accruals, receivables and the capitalization of assets. Hence, we need to make certain adjustments to take the EBIT and arrive at free cash flows to the firm. But before we do that, first we need to deduct the tax expense. Just a point here. Interest is tax deductible and typically when we calculate tax expense, we would deduct the interest from the earnings. However, in this case, since we are calculating unlevered free cash flows, we will ignore the interest in this case. So we will calculate a hypothetical tax expense, assuming that there's no interest and no debt. Remember, we're converting accounting earnings into free cash flows. So next, we need to add back any non-cash items that the accountants may have processed. And this is usually depreciation and amortization. Depreciation and amortization are expenses that the accountants create and these expenses do not involve any cash flows. So here we add them back because they are non-cash. Other non-cash items could include things like impairment charges, stock options expenses, or unrealized gains and losses. Next, we need to adjust for changes in working capital. Working capital are those short-term assets and liabilities that you need to run a business. Working capital items are things like inventory, accounts receivables, and accounts payables. So think about when a business is growing and sales are increasing. And if you are selling on credit, your accounts receivables over time will start to get bigger as you do more sales. And as your business grows, you need to purchase inventory. And if this inventory is bought on credit, then your accounts payable tends to increase. And this is all called working capital. And this is the working capital principle which we did cover in detail in an earlier session. So you can refer to that session for more details on working capital. Cash flow is required to grow your working capital. So if your working capital is increasing, that means you are using cash to increase the working capital. And on the flip side, when your working capital balances decrease, cash is being released from working capital. So to summarize, if working capital increases, that means that you are using cash and your cash balance is actually decreasing, so you deduct increases in net working capital. And on the flip side, if your working capital balance decreases, it means that cash is being released and your cash balance is increasing, so you add back any decreases in net working capital. So just be sure to adjust your calculation accordingly. And finally, since we have added back the depreciation and amortization, the flip side is that we have to deduct any capital expenditures. 
short for capex capital expenditures is actual cash that you would invest in long-term assets so if you would buy a factory or like some property plant and equipment this is capex or if you would buy some technology this is capex and then later on this capex over time the accountants put it as depreciation and amortization so what we are doing here is undoing all the work the accountants have done and we are trying to get to the true cash inflows and outflows of a business. And this results in free cash flows to the firm. And this is what we're going to use to forecast the free cash flows to the firm and then use this to, to derive the value of the business. Note how we purposely excluded interest and debt repayments from the free cash flow to the firm calculation in the previous slide. Hence, these cash flows can be claimed by both debt and equity holders. Debt holders will get the interest and the debt repayments and the equity holders get whatever is left over. Now, had we paid off the debt holders, which is their interest and debt repayments, then we would just have free cash flows to equity because whatever is left over after paying off the interest and debt is basically what is due to equity holders. And when we forecast this free cash flows to the firm into perpetuity and then we need to discount it by WAC. This will result in enterprise value, which is also known as firm value. Remember terminology in an earlier session, enterprise value is also known as firm value, total enterprise value or short for EV or TEV. When we forecast free cash flows to equity into perpetuity, we then need to discount this by the cost of equity. And the present value of free cash flow to equity by the cost of equity is known as equity value, also known as market capitalization or short market cap. And as explained in the previous session, the difference between enterprise value and equity value is net debt.